Hey, Alex Terry here. Thank you for tuning into my podcast. We are here to discuss all about leadership, thinking and behaviors. We are here to talk about how to transit from control command leadership to more inspiring leadership with high influence and trust. We are going to deep dive into three components of leadership and performance, cognitive, emotional and behavioral. And talk about how mastering our mind and thinking will actually change our action and results. Our thoughts are powerful, trust me. They determine how you feel, your decisions and actions. Your thoughts are one of the most powerful tools you will ever have in changing your life and career. By mastering your thinking, emotions and behaviors, you will create greater results for yourself, for your family, friends or your team. Focusing on thinking, feeling and acting will improve your confidence, of course reduce stress and empower you and others around you, inspire and improve engagement in your team or collaboration and of course create high performance. I hope you will enjoy our episodes. And please don't forget to comment or contact us. Please ask questions. Please send us ideas of what topics you are interested in and we will discuss anything you need. Have a beautiful day. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for tuning into my podcast. Uh, it's really nice to have you all here and it's really nice to have my guest with me, Thomas. I will probably just start with a little bit of think that why I'm actually here with you, why I invited you, because the most important part was for me when I met you first time, I had this feeling and I met you with your wife. It was just this crazy meeting for not only one hour, I think it was like two and a half hours. And, and I think I cried like three times because we were so connected and aligned with vision and what we see in the world and what we want to change. And and like we had all this energy and, and we talk about things that we can do in this world. And I just got, I got so inspired and I felt so great. And I feel like from that minute or from that hour together or two hours together, we just, we just connected a much deeper level on different level than I connected with other people. And that's why I was really happy that you say yes to being here today. And we can actually talk about more deeper stuff, business stuff, life stuff, but I would love to share with people who you are because you are doing amazing stuff in business. You are helping a lot of different people and you have bigger dreams than, than you are, right? Like you have, you have massive vision and I think that's what needs to be shared in the world. So that means welcome. Really, really appreciate that you're here with me today. No, I appreciate the opportunity. One of the biggest things, though, that um, those crying three times the first time we met, I thought it was the coffee and the food, but uh, <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I was I was so excited about food. My God, <laughs> tears yeah. in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, Thomas, look, I, I think for people, it will be great if you can just give uh, a little bit of overview about your background, where you're coming from, how did you end up here in Australia, in Perth? in your job in work in business that you are at and yeah just give us a little bit of a little bit of background because i think it's very interesting okay so <clears throat> i was born in australia i was born on the other side of the country though so in sydney um i was born in Parramatta hospital but i lived in um, in western sydney in an area called Greystains. um mother and father um and two siblings it was um wonderful growing up in the um, late 70s early 80s, um, you know, the rock culture, the buffy hair, the Australian <laughs> culture of the 80s was amazing and all that. Um, went to a, um, went to a um, Catholic school, um, did a lot of learning. Um, I um, found very early in my life that I enjoyed mathematics, physics and the sciences. I wasn't really great with literature and all that. That came a lot later as yeah. reading more, learning more and all that. Um, I have interests in Aikido. I've been training um, in Aikido since I was four years old. And equally around the same time, I started learning to play flamenco guitar as well. So this is one of, this is my extracurricular activity, which is actually uh, very soothing to the nerves. 
I love it. <laughs> through that, um, yeah, went through that. I uh, went to university, um, studied physics at university, and then took a career in um, technology-based industries and all that. So I have worked with government, worked with uh, critical infrastructure, anything to do with critical systems and critical um, organizations has been my thing. So basically being on edge, working with emerging technology, working with lots of people of different races, different um, backgrounds. And that's where my love of dealing with people came from because there is never a day where it's the same as the other. And that is, this is what I like. Um, I love adrenaline and I love moving forward and being highly motivated to do things. So that's why um, every day being different is um, where I am at the moment. Yeah, definitely. You like variety, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's great, right? Like that's, uh, uh, I'm very similar. I think variety is, is really important in life because we're learning through trying different things and, you know, trying new things. And uh, it makes our mind more flexible, I guess. That will be probably the one thing. And uh, yeah, can you tell us more about what you do right now? Because that will be yeah, probably, okay. yeah. So um, six years ago, we started a started a cybersecurity business, and that has flourished um, not only because of the number of attacks that are happening around the world, but because. We want to problem solve. We don't want to do cyber security. We don't want to do people security. We want to solve problems in business. And one of the biggest problems at the moment that's not being recognized really well is information and how much information is worth to an organization. Yeah. It is the new commodity. It's, it's gone beyond what gold and silver is because why rob the mint when you can steal the information and just allocate the um, assets to your name? So there's two different ways of looking at that. <clears throat> Our journey took us to creating Thomas Cyber Brand. And only recently we've just been acquired by a company called DC2 Limited, who are by um, who've bought um, an asset base from us and basically bought my skill set and our team's skill set into the organization to further develop their capability, which is actually a blessing in disguise because we don't have to worry about all the admin in business now. It's more we can concentrate on the research, development, and delivery of what we do best. Wow, yeah, that's that's massive move. And I know when you when you told me, I was like, yeah, that's really exciting step, step in your business from perspective of you doing what you love to do fully, and you don't need to be concentrating on that part of the business that maybe it was not really you know your jam or something that you really didn't enjoy that much. Oh, yeah, that... exactly. I mean, you don't need to own a business to um, live your passion. You just need to be able to find the opportunity to yeah. live your passion. You find your opportunity, you find the things that make you happy, and you just go for them. And this is where the my highly motivated background comes from. Yeah, is all is all about just finding opportunity. Go for it. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, Thomas, I I know you like. Yeah, you are a lot in like a tech side of the things. But the funny thing is that usually tech people are more um, C, we call them C energy in, in, in uh, our EDS assessment, right? But you are really people person. You're very different that you're in tech area, but you are still person that is looking for vari variety and, and that adrenaline or dopamine or, you know, different hormones and different like a happiness journey, right? Like yeah. it's very different. And and I will be probably interested like how, how come, like how, how, that you ended up in tech space and love physics, but still same time, you just love people and you're so attracted to help the world, right? And, and having bigger visions. Yeah, well, I see problems in the world, but I also, and I see challenges, and but I also see solutions and outcomes for things. The only way we're ever going to solve anything is through people. It's about connecting with people because when when life first started, like, millions of years ago and then even tens of thousands tens of thousands of years ago when humans started to roam the earth and things like that we only had each other we didn't really have anything and i'm all about one of the things where i went from tech into people was starting to read about history and learning more about history and what the world would have been like and evolution evolution was a very big thing about how we make ourselves better, not merely about how we went from an ape to a human and all these different concepts that biologists have come up with. Yeah. Um, us going back to what we primarily do as a human 
and it's communicate with each other, work with each other, because you can't build a wheel without talking to another human. You have to have interaction with others because you will never have ideas generated well when you've got only yourself because there is no one to challenge you from that perspective. And this is what I love about the human. Human will always get challenged. And I'm always up for the challenge. If someone comes and says, that's wrong, I would always love not to prove the person wrong, but to always work out why I am wrong and how I can better myself all the time. And then that extends into the network of helping others and why I do what I do. Yeah, this is Thomas, I know, like, it's exactly the the understanding of uh, human connection and and love itself, like, actually, we all seeking that, right? Like, we all seeking uh, some kind of acceptance or some kind of belonging feeling of love and connection, because it's so natural, it's, it's so natural, it's in us, like, we are social, hum- social creatures, right? Like, we need to connect. Yeah. And and we all thrive and we connect. Of course, we have a lot of people, they like to be alone, but it doesn't mean they they can be alone forever and, and not see anyone. They need to connect as well. So as I always said, you know, when you have people, they like to be alone, doesn't mean they want to be al- alone for, <laughs> forever, right? They, they want to have family. They want to have kids. They still want to have their community. And it's so important. Yeah, I, I agree with collaboration and being with other people. We achieve much more than alone because it's just not possible to do something big alone. And I really love that side of you because I know you are very collaborative, but I would probably ask, because I know you have so much experience and you were going through a lot of ups and downs. And and when you think about your career or your business career, because I know you're very successful now, but it was probably not always like that. And and I would like to see maybe some uh, struggles and challenges and how did you solve them in your business or in your life? Yeah. So with every business, there are ups and downs. And if there are no ups and downs, there is no way of becoming better. So, for example, when we first started the business, we started on a really big high. We actually didn't know what to do with the business initially because we were landed a very large contract. We had to mobilize and get started. There was We didn't even have a name for the business. Business wasn't even registered at the time. So we had to start. That That's process. good start. <laughs> It is a very good sign. And then over time, starting to work with a very large multinational organization, moving through the ranks of that and then dealing with, there are also cultural issues because they're um, they're hosted overseas, not here. So their business uh, way of doing business was very different. So that started sparking challenges on how we want to operate as a business. So that added a load onto the business as well as just delivering things because we had to culturally deal with that organization, which was really great. And it was a learning experience, but then it involved getting on a plane and having to go over to that country to discuss what we needed to do, which then put a spanner in the works for certain things. But then, yeah, those those spanners in the works, they become challenges. And what we do is we just look at challenges as another thing to do in the business. Yeah. So we started dealing with those. And then after that, there was a bit of a demise, not demise in the business, but a drop in the amount of work coming yeah. in. But what we look at that is, is the time when nature is probably telling us it's time to plan for the next big uh, big amount of work coming in. So yeah. we sit there two or three months, plan for that work, and all of a sudden, um, all the networking and all the discussions you have with people, work comes in the door. No matter what it is, you start delivering that work, And then we become really good at this, at um, having the highs and lows to the point we actually enjoyed it in the business because it gave us time to regroup very much like a Shinto monk in Japan. They'll basically go into solitude. They will go and uh, meditate by themselves for a period of time, but then they will come back out and talk about what they've experienced and also discuss what the next thing is in life. So we felt it very much like that cycle in the business. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I love that you actually, you said, you described me exactly what happened. It's interesting. And I know we talk about that, that we are going through very similar uh, stages together, even yeah. though we are not working together and we are not next to each other and knowing everything about each other businesses, but, but we were experiencing very similar things. And that's the, that's probably what is really fascinating me because I don't know if you agree, but I, I learned that that stuff that you know taking step away from your business and don't push when that push just doesn't work because you push one direction right like you're almost going and hitting the wall but we stay so rigid and so scared you know money we can't drop the revenue we, we're paying people 
and, and we stay a little bit rigid and some some moments we almost stay inflexible and yeah. and we can't see when we when we don't go to meditate or we don't go away and and we don't try to find different flow different energy in us and and this connection from the business it's really hard to get back and actually start to understand what is happening it's almost like you don't see like there is actually next stage yeah Next, exactly. next season in your business, yeah. It's, so it's, like, it's like when COVID hit. A lot, of, a lot of people have never seen a pandemic before. So a lot of people got really upset and I yeah. don't know what to do. I mean, one of the biggest things, there was a shortage of toilet paper, a shortage of being able to go to shops and interact. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> I do remember all of it. And I remember having a discussion at home about, well, what are we going to do if we can't, we can't have our usual life, our usual food. Well, you think about it, you know, in a pandemic, Vegemite sandwiches have never tasted so good because if you can only buy bread and buy Vegemite from the shelf because all the shelves have been ransacked, it's a matter of survival. And this is what our business is all about, is teaching a business how to survive an attack when it happens. It's yeah. not about protecting because... You can't protect from something you can't see, but you can sure as hell survive that when you exactly. go through it. That's teaching those survival skills and then teaching you how to protect yourself yeah. later on, not just about the protection itself. I love that. And I love that because I think the protection part comes from fear, right? You try to protect what you have. It's almost like people get stuck and frozen. They get like so they freeze because they're like, I can't spend more because I need to protect. Yeah. And actually, that's the time when you need to spend more. You need to actually invest and you need to maybe change direction. Maybe you need to restructure. Maybe you need to just, just pause and, and do something differently. And maybe it's more expensive. That means it's it's almost like at exactly at that stage, what you said, I love that. That, that is really great reframe, actually not protecting because protection is not helping, right? Like it's it's, right. Surviv it's surviving and thriving, you know, at the end because, because people... I think a lot of lot of comes from from fear and from uncertainty because we don't know how to deal with uncertainty, right? And pandemic yeah. and crisis, and still people don't have enough certainty about their jobs, about you know if if actually there will be enough money to pay mortgages. Like, it's, and is that fight and flight mode where I feel that we just protect ourselves? That's just I love that that expression. That's amazing. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's not helping us to go for, forward, move forward. Yeah, and also, all back, yeah. You know? and also once you think that you have lost options, you can't grow anymore. You can't you can't work well. So you've got to always make sure you have options in front of you. Yeah, and this is why you learn to survive because survival teaches you to have options to yeah. move forward. Protection teaches you only one thing, and that's to stop whatever harm is coming towards you. And we want us to get out of that mindset and go into the mindset of having options. So not necessarily do you need to um, defend yourself yeah. if there's an attacker coming or a cyber attack and all that. Maybe sometimes it's about stepping to the right and allowing the attack to happen sometimes because you can't do anything about it. It's like the pandemic. We couldn't do anything about it. So yeah, it's about it's now okay. survive. What are we going to do for the next 12 months? We're going to eat Vegemite sandwiches. We're going to watch um, whatever reruns we have on <laughs> television, you know, watching daytime television or maybe turning it off and reading a book. We found during COVID doing jigsaw puzzles was a great thing because it brought everyone around the table around a 3,000 piece jigsaw and building it, you know, and it uh, love a it. place for conversation as well for that. Yeah. And yeah, I actually saw it. That's, that's really true. A lot of people couldn't see options and they just protected what they have and they, they stay stuck. And, uh, and there was a lot of people, they, they pivot, they change because there is always opportunity to change your business or change the direction, the way that will help you to survive, right? Like it, it will help you to actually become maybe even stronger. And, and especially from crisis and, and from this type of winter time, winter season that we have in on the planet. And, you know, in my age, I think I'm in like autumn season. That means I still have, you know, time to build up something, but I could stay, fro I could stay frozen or I can just, you know, stop and do nothing. Instead, we still, we still did something we, we tried to help people during pandemic they didn't have money didn't have access to anything we did free free work i did like one year of free free work for people and and it's okay you know it's it's yeah. okay i survived and 
I learned and, and I love what you said. It's, it's really interesting uh, frame, survive, learn to survive. I think it's like from army as well, right? Like you, you don't stop. Exactly. You just so try to survive. Yeah, exactly. So when um, so the, the Aikido that I teach is about surviving. It's about having options when, because you will always either be attacked by one or by multiple attackers. So it's about learning that you need to you need to survive this. Whatever you're trying to protect yourself, you have to forget about that. And you have to now say, if I don't survive what's going to occur right now in the present, yeah. <laughs> the future is not going to be there to be able to go and protect it and, and build it better than what it is. So it's always about now. It's always about here and now. With, yeah. with a vision of the future, you can see the future. You know what your goals are and what your vision is and the mission to get there. But the one biggest thing we never talk about in business is the biggest obstacles we have on the way, because those obstacles will always taint our vision and they'll taint the mission that we have. So it's about taking that white noise out and keeping those survival elements in the present and never letting them affect what's happening in the future. Yeah. What is, uh, when you think of any mention obstacles, right? Like what is maybe the example of obstacle that you feel like maybe most businesses are actually dealing with or facing and you already overcome overcame that you are on you know other side uh, you you have successful business what is that example of like obstacle that you solve and you move forward do you have any any examples from yeah life? absolutely <laughs> one of the biggest ones with our business because we're a professional services business it is keeping the pipeline alive of all the opportunities yeah. moving forward. And we need to start, we need to predict into three months, six months, what are we doing in those three and six month times? And sometimes you can't predict it. So some of the obstacles we hit is we don't have anything in the pipeline for a month. And as soon as that happens, you have certain people who will panic, certain yeah. people who will embrace it. What we do is we embrace it that if we don't have work in that month, it just merely means we're going to more networking events. We're going to meet more people in that time. It's not about we've got this obstacle that, oh, we have no work. Let's go home and put the television and watch Netflix. It's not, why, it's not the way we work in our business. What we do is we just now, we hunt harder because we, we love hunting in our business and hunting for work and hunting for opportunity and research opportunities and things like that. So what we do is we just hunt harder in that time we go out and one of the things that we instill in everyone in the team is don't be afraid to ask for something. Mm -hmm. So if you want, for example, an opportunity or you want a referral, go and ask somebody because it, it, the worst that can happen is they say no. Yeah. And, and someone saying no to you is one of those survival elements that helps you build resilience when you're told no, because yeah. you can be told no a hundred times. And in, in that hundred times, there may be two opportunities and two is better than none in that exactly. we don't, yeah so a lot of these organizations that talk about building pipeline and having 98 percent hit rates and all that i don't like those philosophies what i like is is that if you hunt and you have what you've got so you can eat and survive the rest of it's a bonus off the end of it and we need to keep that mindset to remain humble through the process yeah yeah, it's very different philosophy. And I, I think it's a great example for people. They they really get stuck when there is no work. And and I love, like, I, I actually, I was thinking about that as well, because, you know, you have those small obstacles, of ups and downs in sales, for example. And it's interesting what I learned. I don't know, but I, I believe you will agree. But for example, when I have these uh, few weeks and it's like, oh, it's actually not a lot of sales goals. It's not a lot of like, like opportunities. I'm thinking, yes, of course, first, how I can create opportunity to help more people. But I have always in that that time, I'm like, okay, what, what do I need to focus on? What is life or business telling me that I need to go and maybe contemplate a little bit? Because maybe there is the step that needs to be done. Maybe there is a change that needs to be done. Maybe there is another stage of the business that needs to happen. But I can't see it when I'm busy with sales and busy yeah. with clients. That means I, I feel like that time when you are not super busy is actually so good and healthy for business and you, like yeah. as a business owner. And it was actually the best thing that happened to me that actually I didn't have enough clients. Like I had enough clients, I mean, from perspective of having monthly income, paying the staff, but but it wasn't, you know, thriving how I wanted. But I found that finding that 
inside I was thinking like I can't have more clients anyway because I want to change a lot of things you know and yeah. it's interesting how we don't realize that actually her life is helping us to do it the right way but yeah. we can't see it because we just get so in a cycle right we do we become also very poor listeners and the the worst listener we become is listening to ourselves and listening to nature what it's trying to tell us oh yes because um, usually when you're leading up to a heart and someone leads up to a heart attack, you don't listen until it, until it actually happens. And then you've got nature telling you, I told you so, I told you so. So you don't want to get into the cycle of I told you so. Wow, the best yeah. thing is stop and listen because maybe what someone tells you is irrelevant right now, but it will have significant relevance later on. So it's about collecting what it is all this data, and we're basically like a big data system ourselves as humans. We collect a lot of data, and it's about building that right time to use the data and information to build intelligence about what we need to do moving forward. Yeah, yeah I love it. I, I like how you compare listening to yourself, but also listening to business, right? Because that what is happening, it's almost like listening to the situation or being right. tuned into present moment and and yeah sometimes there are people they're running businesses and they are last five years in anxiety and they're running business from that space they they have anxiety they have pressure on the chest they have fear they they're confused they're overwhelmed and they still run the business same way i think that's the big probably reminder to everyone what you mentioned you know it don't don't, don't take everything as an obstacle start to see opportunities but you can see it only when you will start to listen to yourself maybe you need a break maybe you need you know something just pause maybe you need to just change change environment sometimes even holidays or meditation or exercise or listen to music because you didn't listen to music for like last 10 years because you are in business right but it's it's it's, we, we we forget so many things I had my husband yesterday with the headphones. He was like, oh, do you like this song? And he gave me headphones. And I, I was just like so excited. I was like, oh my God, like this is cool. And I started to dance. After one minute, I gave him back my headphones. I said, thank you. I just got it. And he was like, yeah. what, just, what just happened? And I said, I just know exactly what needs to change to the next step, to the next stage in the business. He was looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> in one minute, one minute, I just changed the way how I feel. And it was amazing. I was like, wow, I feel great. <laughs> One thing I used to do um, a long time ago is um, when I was in Canberra, if I felt I felt like overwhelmed or something like that, I used to go for a walk. Um, yeah, I love but it. Not, I love but, not, but not for a walk, just aimlessly. So I used to go and pick somewhere because Canberra's got some beautiful gardens in Commonwealth Park. So I used to yeah. go and walk among those um, gardens but one of the things I do, and here in Western Australia, we've got a beautiful museum and a beautiful, you know, the art galleries and things like that. And sometimes at lunchtime, take a bigger break, go and have some lunch, and then go and walk in the museum and Love go and, and have some, and you go and be, you're reminded in the museum about things could have been worse in the past, they, they were worse in the past. You know, but they didn't have an avenue in the past to be able to solve some of these problems right away. So, and it reminds you that we're in really good times because we do have resolution for a lot of things if we stop and listen for them. Okay. Because a lot of them, we're so moving, we're moving so fast paced. It's almost like we keep driving past the, the fuel stop because it's too hard to stop there and fill up mm -hmm. fuel when we're told. And then somewhere down the track, we run out of fuel in the car yeah. and yeah. then it becomes a big problem then especially when you're in the middle of the night and the middle of nowhere and you've run out of fuel so the key is to just stop go for a walk get reminded and this is why these shinto monks go and meditate they go and meditate to remind themselves why they're here oh. what their purpose in life is and all that and once they're reminded then they become the teacher but while they're meditating they're the, they become the student to nature when that happens yeah, uh, honestly, meditation, I was always against because I couldn't meditate. I couldn't, you know, calm myself down. I couldn't stop my thinking because I had all these wrong messages what meditation is. And when I learned that meditation is accept everything that is coming, if you have overwhelm, if you have a lot of thoughts, just accept that. Yeah. Don't try to stop it. That means I realized how the life force, right, and the pressure we create actually works against us. That means I was I was not able to meditate for years. And the one day when I found out someone told me, you just sit with it. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. I was like, and I, from that day, 
I love meditation because I sit with that. And yeah. I sit with feelings. I sit with thoughts. I, I sit with pressure and tension in my body. I sit when I you know feel good. I sit with that. And I sit in any kind of space and any kind of situation and feelings. And I can sit with that. I can let it let it go. Yeah. And and that was absolutely amazing. And yeah, it's helping so many people now. And I'm thinking, you know, how, how they realize that it doesn't need to be stopping the thinking. Because if you stop the thinking, it's just it's just that's not even possible right like the, the thinking is an ongoing it's like non-stop yeah. and it's pretty hard and uh, yeah it's it's interesting and I, I love that to go you know somewhere and just meditate and understand why we are here and I always come to the same point we are here to help each other we are we are here to do something great for each other we are here to do something great for planet for animals for for people like it's, it's not about us, you know, the, the world is just to be here and do something nice and kind. And um, yeah, I would love to ask you one thing, because I'm, I'm curious, because I know a lot of things are changing in your life. And, and I know you have a lot of things ahead. Uh, what is what is when, when you think about success itself? I know, of course, everybody wants money, right? And, and money is giving is giving us freedom. But what is, what is true success to you? Like, like, how you see yourself and you say, like, you know what, like, I live this successful life, what it is, how that looks like. So <clears throat> I don't measure success by via money. Never, never measure it like that because money comes and goes. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing that doesn't come and go, one thing that needs to be maintained are your networks of people, the people around you, the relationships you have. It's the most important thing because you could lose $10 tomorrow but if you're still a good person, you won't lose the relationship with the individual that you have. So things like, you know, we speak about values in business, like trust, loyalty, courage, and all these things. Having a really good value system is a secret to success because if you can stick to your values and every day live them one by one and treat people really, really well, that $10 becomes $100 because somebody will believe in you to yep. keep the business going. So the money will keep coming as part of your business. Yeah. But it's about respecting what you have in your business, the people around you, respecting relationships, but also coming back into the fam, the core family, that if your family is not working well inside and if you've got your friendships are not working well as well outside of business, it all contributes to a larger problem over time. So what we like to do and what I like to do with my success is make sure there's harmony through the whole process, now nothing's going to be perfect, but it's about managing expectations and managing everything through that process with people relationships. Yeah, I, I love relationships. I think I believe they are really true cornerstone of every success in, in any kind of any part of your life. Like when you think about health, you know, business, career, if you don't have relationships, it's really hard to grow and, and to change the career and, and become better and, and learn. Like we learn from each other. That was, that's uh, to me, that's the big thing. But I was thinking about what you were saying. I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's about relationships and values are so important. And I was thinking how, because some people create values, but after that we are evolving, right? Like after a year or two, we're evolving to different person. And I experienced that a lot in my business. And it's funny thing, because I was actually checking my old values and new values. And I was just comparing because they are all in the one space because I want to keep them in one folder just to see how the business and, and persona or maybe like the, the, I guess, vision is evolving. And oh my God, if you, if you would see that, you would laugh. Like my old values were... Um, the first one was the result speaks for themselves. The second was discipline and the third yeah. was consistency. And I was surprised that I'm burnt out. And I was just basically measuring KPIs. I was disciplined. I wake up 4, 30, 5 a.m. I was doing everything perfect, routines and everything. It wasn't me. I was just having that because that's the you know formula for success. And I realized that I have much more success when I realized when I evolved and other, other, now when you check the uh, all values are kindness, yeah. <laughs> evolution and relationships. It's like everything changed and evolved and yeah. everything has deeper meaning 
it's not anymore just KPI. And but we start business that there, you know. I always said we start business somewhere, and we need to start with focus on discipline. We need to start somewhere where we will focus on maybe consistency and stuff because consistency is building reputation and all that stuff. That means there were magic somewhere there in values, in that values, but I think I leave them too rigidly. Yeah, and I forgot to focus on the first value that should be maybe connection, maybe love, maybe relationship, maybe the meaning, you know, the deeper meaning. And we forget that in business because we are in, I, I don't know, it's more masculine energy. I think from perspective of running the business, we try to do it all from logical brain. Yeah. But I believe it's more about the gut feeling and instinct yes. and, and having intuition. And I would like to ask you about that. How do you use intuition in your business? So... I'm all about out of the box thinking. So one of the one of the things is I get bored very easy. So I have to keep stimulating myself, reading, learning, all that kind of thing. And using intuition, if you have a strict value system, you are going to be rigid, as you're saying, because you're going to follow it to the word. <laughs> and one of the biggest things with success and using intuition and instinct is for you to self-inflict on yourself something every week that basically switches off and challenges one of your values or challenges something. So, for example, I'm like yourself. Five o'clock, wake up in the morning, get very disciplined and all that. On the weekends, I will on purposely forget to put the alarm on to wake up in the morning. But you still wake up five, right? <laughs> wake up at five o'clock. <laughs> Yeah, but it's amazing that, you know, you sit, you wake up in the morning, you at five o'clock, you know, you're not having to go to work. You start listening to the birds that are chirping outside. Yeah. And it's almost, almost like they are an alarm system telling you, you need more sleep. So <laughs> using that, into, using intuition like that for simple things like that to say, if I need more sleep, it's Saturday. All I have to do is get up and mow the lawn, you know, do some washing, Go to the museum if I feel like, you know, if you feel like going for a walk, do something with the family. That's a really, really great place to be that if you can challenge those things. Because, for example, trust as a value. I don't ever see anyone testing the values of the company of trust because we say trust, but then go and have a look at any of your, um, any of the testimonials people have given and all that. Does it sound like trust is coming out in testimonials? Does it sound like love? harmony, resilience, all those things. So it's about challenging, and, and that's where the intuition comes in, is about challenging those values in the business to see are you really still at that point? Yeah, that's really good. Uh, that's a really good point. That's actually how I realized what my business really does when I started to get testimonials and feedback from uh, from uh, clients that I realized I'm advertising one thing, we're pushing one thing, but we are something else. We, we are going a little bit different direction because we create different experience. And I think when you have rigid values, you don't look at that experience that is actually true to yourself. It's almost like you're losing authenticity. And, and that's really dangerous because I, I was there. I've been there. I know how that feels. And it's massive disconnection with who you are. It's it's massive yeah. disconnection from your vision. And yeah, it was, it was a sad place. It wasn't nice, but... I would like to know what is your vision because I know you have greater vision and mission and maybe that will be something I would love to hear because because I know it's inspiring and I know you have so many things that you plan to do. So it doesn't need to be just business vision, but in general, yeah. like what is your personal? So while businesses have visions, my personal vision is about humanizing the world. Love we, it. Ooh. We have become so technologically, in, we have so much technology inflicted on us now and so much digital ones and zeros. And this is where rigidity comes from. Technology is only one or zero. It's There is no analog. There is no um, up and down and all that and various areas of gray area and all that. It's all just one and zero. It's that either, and sorry to put it like this, but either you, know, you can put a really bad remark on someone's uh, Twitter and say, you're an idiot or not. There's no... Um, on LinkedIn, for example, there are some really good people in my network on LinkedIn who are always encouraging you to write something more than well done. You know, you've done a great job and all that. And we do. And we'll generate something up to about 100 words of a response to certain people because what we want to do is encourage discussion. Because what, what I say and what my opinion is is different to someone else. So, yeah, exactly. so that whole vision is about humanizing everything again. 
coming yeah. back to discussion and talking. Even now, we'll do less emailing, pick up the phone and talk to somebody. I love that one so much. Yeah. Really. And it's and it, and if you pick up the phone, you speak to somebody, you can actually hear in their voice. You yeah. can hear that human element. That way, and people appreciate it. It's amazing the buzz people will get once they've spoken to someone on the phone. Not everyone's like that, but there are a lot of people that are like that. And it's about reconnecting that whole human element again. And that's what our, that's what my personal vision is. But it's also driven through the business as well, that whole yeah. human element. And this is why our cybersecurity business is all about humanizing technology and humanizing cybersecurity. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of people will want to talk about this uh, with you because it's uh, I, I love the direction and I love the the bigger vision, you know, um, I guess behind the business itself because exactly what you said it just does you know one or zero it's it's very black and white but it can be actually human and I agree honestly what I what I actually started to do as well um connecting to people instead of just sending message I'm actually recording message and yeah. I did it with my friend I didn't see him for oh my god I don't want to even say it <laughs> 25 years 27 <laughs> oh my god it's, it's so bad right yeah getting old uh, but yeah I can say now I didn't see someone for 27 years and I was like, why are we actually sending messages to each other? And I recorded a message and I said, you know what? Like, uh, I think like, let's do this. You know, this will probably be better. And we can connect with, with each other again, you know, remind ourselves the times 27 years ago and just talk. And he just sent me a message back, a voice message. And I heard his voice and I was like, that's a totally different experience that I have from, from a message. I couldn't even like see his face properly. And when he started to talk, I saw his face and I saw him exactly in situations where we were, you know, it was interesting. That was so interesting how that connection happened so quickly and it was much deeper than just sending messages. And that's when I realized um, I'm just doing that now and just sending voice messages. It's just so much nicer. And that's what you've been doing with me. Of like, <laughs> I've been getting a lot of more voice messages. And like I say, I get goosebumps sometimes when I get some of these messages because you can feel the heartfelt you can feel. that comes through. You've got, and one of the things that we do with communication is a, a lot of, there's a conception of we only using our ears to listen. But when you, when you hear somebody's voice, like for example, if you hear or watch a video of your father, for example, 20 years ago, yep. you, you will remember, yeah, <laughs> yeah you will remember what, what they sounded like, their accent, You'll also remember things that my uh, my dad every now and then would smoke a pipe, for example. So you would you would smell and remember the pipe tobacco. You would remember yeah. All, senses, yeah, yeah, all these little things. And your senses go mad when you when you do that, and that's what being humans about. And this is where it goes back to where you're talking about intuition, instinct, and all that. All these senses generate instinct, and not just one of them. And if all of them are working, and you can visualize that, that's where life becomes fun. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I and I agree. Look, when I when I got a voice message from you, you know, it's just much better. It's much nicer, and I connect with you different ways. And when I'm talking to people, it's almost like you are with them. That means you're really using all senses. And and I agree. It's 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 next level experience. Why we would just communicate via emails and messages if actually we can at least do voice. Now we can do voice and video all the time, and we are not using that in communication. We're just using that on social media. And I think that's, again, a little bit rigid, right? Like we can communicate yeah. better, sending each other video. Why not? <laughs> yeah. you know? and, and it's also the intent that's put into it as well. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of video you will see on, um, a lot of video you'll see online that the intent is purely just to try and draw customers in for mm -hmm. it. But then there's video that you see. It's not, it's not great, but there are videos you see of people who are genuinely trying to get a message out. And those those ones, you will feel it. You will see, you will see their body language will be um, all about, I'm informing you, not I want something from you. Yeah. And those are the really good videos. And those are the things I look forward to in the morning. Once I, you, know, you log in, having a coffee, doing whatever you're doing and watching these videos, it's always a pleasure. And there's a couple of people, I won't name them, but if they ever watch this um, podcast, I'm sure they will know who they who they are that I do enjoy and do comment on um, every morning on a lot of things they say. Thank you so much, Thomas. This is really lovely, and and I really like how human you are. You know how much uh, feelings and 
I guess good intention that you want to create, you know, we're bringing that into your business. And, and I really appreciate it because I think you're bringing that to your everyday life and yeah. you're doing this for people. And I know you did so much for me as well from that perspective. You, you, when we talk and when we say things, it's, it's different. It's different level of conversation. It's just that clear connection, right? Like we have, it's a, uh, it's something that I value the most and not a lot of people are capable of it. And I, I would probably tell people who are listening to you today that really learn and take this from, from this conversation because being connected, having that relationships is, is better than just having relationship. It just, it's different. It's Absolutely. having, having that, having that true deeper connection and I mean intention when you mentioned intention you know like having that intention that you don't want to get something from each other you just want to give and I always say people just start to give without expecting all the time something back just just give because you want not just give because you think that's nature and will come back to you just just give because again that's better the intention to have than just all the time take something and we can't live life like that. It's not natural to take all the time. You need to, you know, put the seeds in the ground if you want to grow your veggies or if you want to grow something. That means you need to give first to get food. It just yeah. doesn't work out of way. And yeah, it's it's. I, I love this conversation. I can probably talk to you so much longer, but I know we are always, you know, time, time. We have 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love to, yeah, I can probably talk another two hours, but I would like to probably ask, if you can just share some life lessons, what do you think is important for people to be themselves, to to live true success, what success means to them, of course, not success yeah. just having money. But what do you think? Like what is the what is the life lesson or one or two that you learn and and you're a better person? It makes you a better human being. Yeah. Um the biggest life I've got one very big life lesson that I learned very early in life then this is my father and my mentors that have basically said the same thing. They're all on the same page. If you can get up in the morning and stare at yourself in the mirror and look at yourself with no clothes on, so you have no pretense, you have no, you haven't dressed yourself to say today I'm a businessman or I'm in pajamas, I'm going to bed and all that. If you can look at yourself in the mirror and basically say, I'm going to be a good person today. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to worry. Now, those things can happen. But I'm starting the day on this foot that I'm going to try not to get angry, try not to worry, you know, be good to others, be good to myself as well. If I can get up and do that in the morning, that's the best start of the day. And that's when people ask you, what do you get out of bed and what gets you out of bed? This is what gets me out of bed in the morning is to be able to go out and help people and all that. But first and foremost, when I get out of bed, you go and sit up in bed, whether you look in a mirror or not, and say, this is what's going to happen today. I'm going to make sure that these things are not going to happen. And then wipe that off the slate and say, today I'm going to be a good person. And that's the biggest life lesson. And then put your suits on and all your clothes and everything yeah. and say, you know what, I've got an Armani shirt. Now, I don't own Armani shirts, but, you know, You've got an Armani shirt on. You've got this brand shoes and all that. I mean, it doesn't define you. Yeah. Because then as my mentors used to say that someone can strip that off you very quickly. And what are you left with? That's, oh, that, that is actually really big for me. I love what you just say, because that's the same with the business or career. People yeah. get so attached to that and they define themselves by what their business is or what they carry is and sometimes they lose it and they just can't get back yeah because it was such a massive identi identification or something like that's me i am my work i'm my business i'm what i do but yeah i can see what you said and i i can feel there is this being is more important than what we are doing yeah it's basically what type of person you are what memories you create with people, what uh, experience you have and what experience people have with you. I think it's more important. Yeah, it's, yeah. I like that. that was, that's a really important lesson. Yeah, there are a lot of business owners who will wake up in the morning and the first thing they start thinking about is, I've got a report that's late to a client. I've got this. That's That doesn't even <laughs> enter. enter the that was me. That was me. Yeah. In and, the past. And, 
And it yeah. was me as well initially. You <laughs> always have that, I'm going to get laid to this. But then what, then what you realize then is I've been brought up about communicating and talking with people. And there's nothing yeah. stopping you the night before to say, hey, that report's going to be an hour late the next day. Yeah. It's going to be two hours late and communicate that. And sure, maybe they will come back and the response is not what you're expecting. Yeah. But again, you can only be told no. And you've got to always remember, you can only be told that things are not that bad. As soon as your livelihood starts to get stripped, this is where your prob the problem happens. So is when you start losing your dignity. And a livelihood's not money, it's your dignity. You lose trust. All the values that you build your life around, the yeah. behaviors that are good for you, as soon as you lose those, you've lost your life when that happens. And that's where the slow demise happens in your life. So the key thing now is, is to maintain good behavior, good relationships, good everything like that. Everything else in life will come to you if you do that because you're operating with nature and not working against nature when that happens. Uh, yeah, it's so true. And that's basically all conversation we had today. It's about giving and having good intention. If you have that and you're coming from authenticity to your relationships and, and you really try to give people through that relationship and not thinking how you can get, I think all that, what we mentioned today was basically tidying up to these final lessons, right? Like what is important for life? It is actually who you are, who you are being, <laughs> what is your yeah. intention and, and what you can give. And if you can make someone else life just for one second better, you know, or for one minute better than they have, or if, if you can make someone else day better, just with saying something nice, I would say, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's say something that can help someone. Let's, let's give feedback. You know, we, when people need feedback, let's give them feedback. Don't walk around and trying to pretend everything is fine when you know, actually that feedback can help them. And yeah. it's almost funny to see how people are scared to help each other because they're worrying about themselves. And it's, yeah. well, it's not about us. It's about others. Right. Yeah. An interesting experiment. And I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to close off on an, on an interesting experiment. Yeah, that... sure. <laughs> For the next couple of weeks, and for anybody who's listening to this as well, go and have a look. So don't go and ask for testimonials for the next couple of weeks. Go and see how many will come to you without you prompting the testimonial and see you know, the value of what's happening. Because testimonials don't necessarily mean Google ads and Google um, testimonial. How many people will say, I'd like to have a cup of coffee and tell you I loved what you did? Or I'd like to have lunch with you because all these are testimonials. It's just yeah. not they're thrown in the public because a testimonial doesn't mean anything to anybody else. What it is, it's important to you as an individual because it actually assures and provides reassurance that you've done something well. Yeah. And that's what it should boil down in the most fundamental basic at the end of the day. And then, yes, you need testimonials to help drive business so people can try, learn to trust you and all that, but if you don't trust yourself and you don't get that assurance on yourself first, your testimonials and references and everything are going to mean yeah. nothing in the end of the day. And it's fake. When you ask people to do it, they feel like they have to do it and it becomes fake, right? And I, I love in my clients that was it's it's always funny because when one person gives you a testimonial, sometimes it creates like a ripple effect, like other people like <laughs> start to compete with them. It's like, oh, he gave you, I will give you. It's like, no, 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 I didn't ask. And it's almost funny. And I love what you said. It's more important to to understand that we are already impacting people's life positively than have it on the website or that have it on the social media. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. I, I agree. It's so important for, yeah. for the person. I love that. I, I love this conversation. Thank you so much, Thomas. And I will probably ask you at the end, share anything that you want to say as a final word and also where people can find you, how they can connect with you. Yep. Okay. So as a final word, so firstly, thanks for having me on the show. And I'd hope to do this again with you at some point. This is, um, this yes. is wonderful. <laughs> um, if people want to reach out to me, um, my, I'm trying to think because I've got a very, very easy, a very difficult surname to spell. I will share it. I will share it in the podcast. Uh, Very, okay, as well. yeah. the easiest way, but the easiest way is to reach out on email or um, happy for you to put mobile phone on that as well. If people want to call out on the cell phone, I'm happy to chat with people, meet with people, coffee. Obviously, in Perth, it's very limited in terms of distance and all that to meet, but happy to do um, virtual um, online 
sessions to chat with people as well because the world is like we're saying it's so well connected now and just because it's digital I guess it's ones and zeros but as long as you can still see people and talk with people it's a good yeah. first step yeah cool okay Thomas I will share your details and uh probably how you pronounce your surname for my people. surname is pronounced Jerej, but it, I'm also known as Smith and Hey You by some circles. So, <laughs> so it, it just depends. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not going. Yeah, I, I'm not going to call you Hey You. I don't like that one. <laughs> oh no, that's um, only in the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Thomas. Appreciate it, and thank you for sharing your experience and um, some great insights from your life and business. And I believe you will be back. I really enjoyed this conversation, and I think there is so much more you can give people. That means I will see you next time again. Not a problem. Thank you very much.